China's New Year pageant ended two weeks ago. However, controversy surrounded the event with concerns the program was staged and the future of Miss New Year uncertain. We caught up with Robin Hickel from the organizing committee after the event and spoke about the concerns and the highlights of the event. According to Mr. Hickel, the event was professionally staged and fair. Now, all the girls did very, very well. And then for those that come, that was on that night on stage, they were all uh, winners already because all of them got a placing, you know. Um, they got the top three and also the top two. So there's, it's just that, that we have to finalize who has or by the judges who were or who won um, number one. So that was just the main thing. But um, on how people... Uh, criticize or complain about the results and all that. That is good criticism as well. It's good for us in our pageant and what we can do. But then the what uh, we got to remember is that we need to encourage and we need to praise the girls that into the pageant. Uh, whether we like the results or not, that's how it is. But then um, it's something for the girls to look forward to. And then, you know, because people expected um, different results or different people have their own choices as well and that's why you know they're disappointed but if we all have an open minded on it and let the girls perform their best which they did on Saturday night and it gave people a very good show um, there was a lot of good comments from our locals and also visitors that came um, you know to pay um, that amount of money to see a very high uh, quality of a show of uh, cultural activities, you know, from their talents, their party wear, their fresh stuff that we have, and also their cultural attires. They were amazed on what the talents that we have here on UA and just how the girls presented themselves and the groups or businesses they're representing as well. Um, so that goes out to the girls and their families and their friends and the chaperones that did their best for that, for that night. And it's sorry that some people are disappointed about it, but that's how it goes. Some of the young ladies that enter the competition might disagree with Mr. Hiko. Michelle March is the first runner-up and she said the event was poorly organized and not all the competitors were advised fairly of what the requirements and criteria were supposed to be judged. First she heard of some of the criteria were on stage when prices were called. One of the contestants had more advantage than the others and it was so obvious with some of the programs. One had more knowledge of topics and was more rehearsed during some visits and programs when other girls were not advised of the actual event. She said she is not upset but there should be a fair competition for all participants. Ms. Marsh said there should be boundaries between contestants and the organizing committee. But the obvious fact was that the newly crowned Miss Niue was closely coached by the organizers. Mr. Hikau said the committee wanted to encourage a Niue in identity com competition with the Miss Niue 2013 rather than that of Miss South Pacific. Uh, we're trying to develop something that is Niuean uh, and we keep it um, that will be belong to us and make it as a quality and, um, you know, instead of just like thinking that you can only, you don't, you don't care about the whole week and then you're only caring about the one important night and that is the final night. Whereas that is our attitude before and that's what people think, you know, you don't have to do much during the week and you just wait for the final night and do your best or perform your best at that time and that's when you're judged. But then now we're trying as as other pages and as um, from our research and trying to establish our, to make it ours, our own, um, those are the criteria that we're putting in. And these are the things that we have explained to all of our contestants and, you know, how people interpret it. But, um, we can't, all the information we put out there. And yes. then we open ourselves up as well for you know, any time for them to come in and, and, and ask us. That's one of the parts that's most difficult for people to, even the um, contestants, because they said not all the information was uh, disseminated. There were some things that were announced on Saturday they did not 
I mean, they, they weren't aware of? Yeah, um, because some of the contestants, they were at the meetings, you know, there was only a contestant that would come or they send one chaperone. And whatever printout or information that we have for them, I don't know how they disseminate that. Uh, but as we put out, like we say to all our contestants, um, to study the forms that they were, they were given, um, if they have any questions, feel free. We are open to come for them to come in. Um, because they're so used to um, having the people just working behind the scenes. And whoever comes to the meeting, um, they don't share that information but it's like we sent out all the forms all the other informations out um, on internet to to a lot of people as well so pretty much um, it's out there and um, we can't you can't do much because you've done all you can and then it's up to them to decide because we said uh, for people to do their best miss me we is now well, obviously, we know um, Miss Nina Hiko um, is crowned as Miss Niwe. However, she wouldn't be able to enter the Miss South Pacific due to her age eligibility. In our second pageant in 2010, we changed the age. And we have a contestant that was 17 at the time. She didn't want to go into the Miss Niwe pageant because she felt that she was too young. And, and if we had kept our rule as to keep her or not to let her in the Miss Teen, she won't uh, participate in the pageant at all. So from that experience, we said in this pageant that we, a 17-year-old, we will allow her that choice. She can either be in the Miss Teen um, category or she can be in the Miss Niwe category. So she has that choice. And in our first uh, meeting with all the contestants, that was all explained out into the um, all the contestants and the chaperones and also interested uh, people that came over to the meeting and we told them that if a girl that is under 18 that will win the Miss Newe pageant that's not eligible um, then will the next um, um, girl to represent Newe for the Miss South Pacific will be the first runner up if she's Say for an example, if she was over 18, um, and then she'll be. And if, if, if she's not over 18, we will offer to the second runner-up. So we already have those plans in place, and everybody that came to the meeting have already um, know, and, and us explaining that um, for people to know. But the people that doesn't know what they think, you know, that this is Miss South Pacific or what, this is our Miss Newe pageant, so we really wanted this to belong to us, and we have our own rules, and then we have our own work that we will cover for the girls. Nancy Manuko from Miss Newe Aotearoa shared the same sentiments as Miss Marsh. She said the competition is supposed to encourage and introduce girls to a new experience and to give her confidence. However, the 2013 pageant was not organized to the advantage of all the contestants, which is very discouraging. Michelle Marsh and Miss Manuko said they give credit to the new Miss Nui, but the process the organizing committee organized and host the event was not right and not fair. The question of who should represent Nui at the Miss South Pacific is also one challenge as the Crown Miss Nui is not eligible to enter because of age criteria. Mr. Hekau said this was advised by the committee to the girls that if any circumstance Ms. Niwe cannot represent Niwe, then the second runner-up will. Ms. Michelle Marsh, who was first runner-up, said it had been recommended that she stay and wait to take her rightful place next year to represent Niwe. This has always been with previous competition. She said, though, she is sad the event caused so much controversy than the empowerment the young ladies were supposed to receive from the competition. A silver one-ounce coin has been struck by New Zealand Mint to celebrate the 50th anniversary of the legendary sci-fi television series Doctor Who. Produced in collaboration with BBC Worldwide Australia and New Zealand, the 0.999 silver 
coin features an engraved picture of the iconic TARDIS as well as a unique 50th anniversary logo. The coin comes packaged in 3D model replica of the TARDIS, the good doctor's legendary phone box shaped time machine. The collector's item was set back enthusiasts by $115. Doctor Who first aired on the BBC in 1963 and originally ran for 26 series until 1989. Priced at $115, the coin is expected to receive much interest from collectors of Doctor Who fans and enthusiasts alike. Only 10,000 of the coins will be issued for sale worldwide. The coins are legal tender for $2 in Niue. Niue's Power Corporation has started household checks for faulty wiring and electrical problems. General Manager Speedo Hetutu says that they recognize the wiring in some houses is not up to standard or has decayed. The fatal e electrocution of a young child a week ago has prompted a need for more regular inspections. Mr. Hetutu says that this is part of government's plan to offer free checks, but there is no set time for these inspections. There is no set time, but we would like to depend on the, on the people at home to, to inform us, and so as the electrical contractors to let us know. Uh, we have also uh, a program uh, from uh, this financial year where we can we help the, the people uh, and can pay for the labor and uh, transport. This is the main aim to assist them in this kind of uh, uh, problems for them to let us know and we can assist. So, but there are some uh, other facts as for the people to know. The, the main uh, uh, bar, metal bar being driven to the earth for every house, we there should be uh, should be one. If it's broken, let us know. So, because the purpose of that one is to to remove all the floating uh, power at home, it disappear down into the soil. And if that bar is broken or been rusted and is not connected properly, then the voltage will have to float in the house. And anyone uh, touching a, a live uh, frame of an appliance might receive a small shock. Speedo says that over 80 households have been inspected. There are also a few factors that people need to be aware of. The shock from a free phase or a single phase are the same. But uh, you have more chance of getting electrical, uh, electrocution in free phase. Because there are, for a free phase, there's free power lines bringing power to the home or to the business or to, to the area you want to power the system. And for a single phase, only one. <clears throat> but the common uh, conductor there is the neutral for all the, the process of power to go through that conductor. So... Uh, here in New Way, the, there are lots of, uh, quite a few in, in town, uh, Alofi, because it's close to the power station and outside, uh, it's only single phase. But the, the electrocution is the same as it hit the person or when the person made contact uh, with a, uh, a certain piece of equipment. The expectation is that with the help of public future freak accidents involving electricity can be avoided. This morning, New Year's High Court registered over 20 cases to be heard by the three justices of the peace. However, the majority of the cases were adjourned due to witness absence or defendant not available in court. One of the more serious cases of a 68-year-old man who was imprisoned registered two charges. Police prosecutor withdrew one of the cases of unlawful acquisition of firearm. He pleaded guilty to the second charge of discharging a firearm within 100 metres of a dwelling. The decision has yet to receive when this news bulletin went to air. Most of the cases presented to the courts this morning, however, continue with transport and negligent driving. The next sitting of the new High Court is confirmed 
for the 16th of July. Rugby Sevens fans were treated on Saturday to some fantastic rugby competition when four local teams compete for the one-day tournament title in the beginning of the Sevens rugby season. Alofi Mako and Tuapa opened the competition with a scorcher, with Tuapa claiming the first win of the season. Avaseli and Southern Marlin continued the contest with Southern Marlin defeating Avaseli. As a result from Saturday, Tuapa and Avaseli both claimed two victories and one loss each, whilst Alofi Mako and Southern Marlin settled for a win each. This afternoon, the executive committee and team managers decided to postpone the next tournament to the 29th of June due to injuries over the weekend and the series on the 13th of July. And to end our news bulletin for this evening, the local netball season is coming to an end with some interesting results in the senior level. Last Saturday, six teams took to the court for some fierce competition with the youngsters giving some of the more senior teams a good run. In the first game between Tuapa and Hakupu Stars, two entertained the crowds. Tuapa managed to score 46 points while Hakupu Stars team two scored 12. Four quarters saw a close finish in the game between Aliutu and Hakupu Stars, one. Aliutu managed 34 while Hakupu Stars, one, came out the victors with 36 points. The youngsters from Classic Flames put on a good game versus Mutalo in what was also a very close game, but it was Classic Flames that came out on top with 21 points to Mutalo's 19. According to the New Island Netball Association, if weather permits, the last lot of games will finish off this week with the last game on this Thursday between Hakupu Stars 1 versus Tuapa. And that is our news bulletin for tonight. Good evening.